for Monday, February 11th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Our first order of business is our opening ceremony, which consists of the national anthem, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence for those service members that have given their lives while defending our country. Would everybody please stand? Please be seated. Most of you are probably seeing, probably noticing we got a new face sitting at the table tonight, our new city clerk, Mr. Matthew Miller. Uh, welcome, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Good evening. To your first televised Garden City Council meeting. Yes. So I'm sure we'll be hearing from you throughout the meeting and, yes. and week meetings to come. And uh, I guess my mic wasn't on, but Mr. Matthew Miller, our new city clerk, and uh, we want to welcome him and uh, we we'll look forward to working with you. Right, thank you. At this time, uh, you want to take the roll, please? Yes, Mayor Walker. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Jacobs. Here. Council Member Lynch. Here. Council Member Squires. Here. Council Member Earl. Here. Council Member McCarge. She's absent. Yeah. Show uh, Council Member McCarge absent and excuse, please. Thank you. And okay. Council Member Kerwin. We'll move on to uh, item four, approval of the agenda as presented. Mayor. Council Member Lynch. I move for the approval of the agenda for Monday, February 11th, 2019 as presented. Support. Support from Council Member Squires. Uh, any comments from the table? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes 6-0. We have no recognition tonight, no presentation. We'll move on to item seven, community events. I'm gonna call up uh, Miss Monica Fulton from the Family Resource Center. Thank you, Mayor Council. Tonight I am here to um, talk a little bit more about um, the Show Me the Money Day event that's happening a week from Saturday, February 23rd at Maplewood Center. In case anyone has missed the massive social media presence this event has had, I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the workshops that'll be available, available between the hours of 10 and 3 on, the, on that day. Everything is free that day, but there'll be, people, there'll be workshops on debt management, budgeting, understanding your credit score. There'll be information on discount programs at Garden City Hospital, legal issues and housing. Um, there also will be a special um, pop-up workshop by Cooking Matters. This is the only one that will need to be pre-registered for. Again, it is free. Um, if anyone is interested, it is gonna be held from 1.30 to 3 during the Show Me the Money Day event. And you can register for this uh, by contacting Megan Sheeran at 734-793-1858. 
Everyone who pre-registers for this work workshop will receive a $10 gift card to a grocery store, as well as a reusable grocery bag. They're gonna be talking about how to spend less time grocery shopping, um, making the best choices for your families. They're gonna have some really um, easy and delicious recipes and on that are, that are very cost effective. Um, there will also be a vendor cafe there. Um, there'll be people that you can talk to from the Western Wayne Family Health Center. Beaumont is gonna give free health screenings. Um, there's gonna be a financial counselor there um, pulling credit reports for people that, that want that. Um, our library will be there, Avon will be there, Liberty Tax of Garden City will be there, Oak Street Health, just a lot, a lot of vendors. Again, the entire event is free. It will be at Maplewood Center on Saturday, February 23rd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, if, you, if you navigate over on Facebook to the Maplewood Community Center's Facebook page, there is an event for this, uh, you know, a, a Facebook event, um, and it's got all of the times of the different workshops so people can pick and choose. There's gonna be giveaways and prize baskets and all kinds of good stuff. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have, uh, moving on to item eight, comments from state and county officials. I see we have Mr. Glenn Anderson, our county commissioner. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, council members and folks at home, as well as in the audience. Uh, I'll be very brief, brief tonight. I uh, had a longer report, but I uh, decided I'll, I know you've got a long agenda. But anyway, I uh, just wanted to, uh, to bring uh, members of the uh, council up to date. Last uh, month on January 24th, uh, we had a full board meeting. We approved uh, some uh, projects uh, that the, the Parks Millage Capital Improvement Projects uh, in Garden City. It's, uh, I believe it was just over $32,000 and it's things that have already been committed and, and actually it's a reimbursement uh, to Garden City. Uh, $15,726 for regrading, re leveling, and other improvements at the baseball fields. Uh, I think they're in, all at Moeller Park. Uh, and $16,545 uh, towards the outdoor fitness court uh, in Garden City Park. And this year I would expect uh, the allocation is gonna be pretty close to the same as the previous year. Uh, that was, I believe, two years. Uh, and uh, so we should have about the same allocation. We should have the numbers probably in the next few weeks uh, as to what it'll be and we'll let you know as soon as we know. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. I don't see anybody from the state, so. We have no petitions or communications. We'll move on to item 10, our public hearing tonight. We have two of them. The first one is on the McDonald's development at Ford and Middlebelt. Anybody wishing to speak on the McDonald's development at Ford and Middlebelt, this is your time to come up and make a comment or a statement. I'll ask one more time. Anybody wishing to speak on the McDonald's development? Okay, I'll close that public hearing. We'll move on to the second public hearing on the Parks and Rec 2019 to 2023 five-year master plan. Uh, anybody wishing to speak on the uh, Parks master plan? Please come up to the podium, state your name. Yes, I'm uh, Ken Kibbett from the Garden City Youth. And as a representative of the organization, we strongly support the five-year plan and hope you would adopt this. And we feel that it's not only in our interest, but other organizations would benefit from this, as lo and as well as the city. We are, uh, strongly urge you to pass the resolution. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, I'll close this uh, public hearing. Move on to item 11, the consent agenda. Council Member Lynch. I move for approval of the consent agenda, items 11A, 1, 2, and 3. Support. Support from Council Member Squires. Any comments from the table, <coughs> from the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, motion passes 6-0. Moving on to our action items. Uh, Item number one, special land use approval for McDonald's. Here. Council Member Lynch. I move that the council elect option number one uh, for the special land use for McDonald's. Option number one is the city council may elect to 
not take the application for special land use under consideration and the recommended approval by the Planning Commission becomes final for the proposed drive through restaurant use. I agree. The Planning Commission approved this on uh, January 10th. So uh, support from Council Member Jacob, so we can just let it go through on the Planning Commission's take approval. Take a vote. Yep. Uh, Mr. Doctor, do you want to say a few things? How many years was this in the making? That's uh, eight to ten, Frank. Ten years? Well, this is exciting news uh, for the community. They're looking at a, a McDonald's that's <coughs> the first sit-down McDonald's in the state of Michigan. Uh, is still in existence uh, down there on our corner, uh, Ford and Middle Belt. So we're looking at, for those in the audience, they may be able to see some pictures of, of what the council is looking at tonight. Uh, you're looking at great collaboration over the years between the city council, McDonald's, the planning commission, and the DDA uh, to get moving on this. Uh, pictures might be a little stretched out on the, the design of the, the TV channel there a little bit, but it will look like a two-story building. And that's, that's a nice thing on the corner. We're adding, looking for some height and setting it as a cornerstone for our downtown development. Uh, when I arrived here, I, I got to talk to McDonald's and I love McDonald's. There's nothing greater than a Big Mac. I mean, if you break it in half, there's not even any fat in it. It's just, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah. But without a doubt, what we didn't want in the city was the standard McDonald's that you find anywhere in the United States. So this literally is an actual unique design. Uh, you may <coughs> go around the country and, and see some really crazy designs of McDonald's. The company has gotten away from that and they're really trying to have a standard design uh, across the, the country at this point. And uh, because of our work in the Planning Commission's efforts to, to say no until we really found something we like, uh, it took a while. So that, that almost a decade to get to where we are now. The, uh, besides the height there, you're looking at also the brick potential. It's a little tough on the computer or the, the internet if anybody's watching this live here is, is the brick itself would be more of what you see at Hershey Shoes or even across the street uh, from McDonald's in the, in the strip mall there with the, where the save arm was. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful brick uh, complemented with the the stone, the stone face uh, going from the ceiling down to the ground. Also, what you don't see there, it'll be tables out front trying to create a walkable community. Uh, it won't be bland like it looks right there, but also if you notice closely around the grass line of the property, you'll see columns, brick columns, and then low brick with wrought iron railing also. So as we look at even the picture you might be looking at right now on the computer or on the, on the television, that's an aerial view You'd have to look at what it would look like from the street as you're driving by with this beautiful wrought iron brick with this two-story looking uh, facade. It's 10 years from now, what's great about this design, 10 years from now it'll still look like a brand new McDonald's. You look at some older McDonald's styles, you drive by, you can tell it's probably been around since the, the 90s. This one will look brand new every time someone drives by it. So, so we're very excited about, uh, about this coming to our city. And at this point, the Planning Commission has gone through its approvals. We literally are at the last step uh, tonight and uh, the decision by the council of course is do we want to move on with more discussion <coughs> to make changes or are we ready to go at this point as the planning commission has given their approval uh, at, at this point if we go with option one as councilwoman lynch brought up is to say we're ready to go we're done if we are uh, passing this tonight approving this we're looking at construction probably starting sometime in april and being fully open maybe by august or, or so sometime in the in the summertime but what a great addition to our, our downtown development and uh, bouncing off to some other things as we see Big Boy coming in, uh, you know, Planet Fitness and some other things you're, you're gonna see uh, coming in the future next year. It's gonna be tremendous development for our city. So I'm excited about this because uh, I love McDonald's. So let's do this thing. Let's Any other comments from the table? I was Council just gonna say, um, the city manager mentioned about it being the first sit down McDonald's. I think there's a few of us in the audience here that remember it as a walk up to the counter McDonald's before it became the first sit down McDonald's. Just saying, so. Okay, any other comments from the table? From the general public? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, that passes 6-0. We will have a new McDonald's in August. Yes. Ish, August-ish. <laughs> Item two, a housing uh, rehab project for community development block grant funding. Okay. Council Member Squires. I move to award the contract for the housing rehabilitation project 18-01-004 
to Deco Construction Incorporated in accordance with the posted bid packet using CDBG funds and to authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Deco Construction Inc. in the amount of $20,590. Support. Support from Council Member Earl. Any uh, comments from the table? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that passes 6-0. Item three, housing rehab project uh, 1801005. Mayor? Councilmember Lynch. I move to award the contract for the housing rehabilitation project 18-01-005 to Onsite Solutions <coughs> Incorporated in accordance with the posting bid packet using CDBG funds and to authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Onsite Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $15,900. Support. Support from Council Member Kerwin. Any comments from the table on this one? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, this one passes 6-0. Item four, Parks and Rec Master Plan. Mayor. Council Member Earl. I move to adopt the attached resolution for the Parks and Recreation Master Plan for the years of 2019 to 2023. Support. Support from Council Member Jacobs. Uh, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, I wanna thank all the people that, uh, the hard work putting this together, Dan Plamadon his group, the Parks and Rec Commission, which is appointed uh, by the mayor's office. I know a lot of you put a lot of time in it and all the organizations that Garden City Youth Athletic Association, uh, all the organizations that use our parks. This is a, a great thing and uh, I just wanna thank everybody involved. Any other comments from the table? From the general public, Mr. Plumadin. <coughs> Good evening. Um, I also want to thank Mayor and Council for the support of, of our department, Parks and Recreation. We're still in the process of uh, you know, climbing out of the recession in some ways. I think this is a great step in that direction. And um, I, I want to say a special thank you to everybody that's been really involved. A big thank you to the commission. Uh, I can't name all their names. And I feel like this is a thank you speech at an award show. I'm sorry, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, everybody, <laughs> Everybody played a big part in this. Um, I'm just one player in the community, and um, if it wasn't for Garden City's strong support of uh, programs in the community, we wouldn't be here doing this today. So I just wanna say thank you to the community, thank you to the commissions and boards, and thank you to the mayor and council. Thank you. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, passes 6-0. Item five, 2019 DNR grant permission request. Mayor. Council Member Jacobs. I move to authorize the Parks and Rec uh, Director to apply for the 2019 Michigan DNR Natural Resources <coughs> Trust Fund and Land and Water Conservation Fund grants for the upcoming April 1st deadline, requiring a 50% match from the City of Garden City and to approve the attached two resolutions required by the Michigan DNR. Support. Support from Councilmember Lynch. Any comments from the table? Mr. Doherty, you wanna? This is, uh, when you have a 50% oh, match, you take it as, as fast as you can. So uh, this would be geared towards a, a large playground, a destination playground for all the community. And uh, you know, anytime you can get money free from the, the state or anywhere else, you take it. Absolutely. That's great. Okay, any other comments from the table? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes 6-0. Okay, this is what everybody's been waiting for, fixing our roads. Yep. Item seven. Number six. I'm sorry, no, well, I'm, one, I'm getting excited. One, one more, wait a minute. <laughs> Two, item six, 2019 poverty exemption guideline. Here. Councilmember Lynch. Move to review and adopt the 2019 poverty guidelines for property tax appeals. Support. Support from Councilmember Kerwin. Any comments from the table? From the general public? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 6 0. Now you can now, get excited. <laughs> everybody wants the roads fixed. This is the, the final step approving the contract. Uh, the next few here, uh, and the bulldozers will start in April. We'll start fixing our side streets. Yes, Mayor. If the council recalls our timeline was in December, having the bids out, January receiving bids, February the council approves the bids, and April 15th or so construction starts. But we are in February. We're hoping to approve the bids tonight, so our timeline is on for construction to start in uh, April. And this first one is for two years, a concrete sectioning uh, program where we're not replacing the entire road, but we're saving uh, areas that uh, that stops us from having to replace the whole road so at a much lower cost. And this would be for a two-year contract. This is for 2019 and 2020. And uh, for fortunately for us, the bid came in the lower than we had expected, which allows us maybe to expand this program uh, as we look at the big picture going into the spring. And yeah. that's a good thing. Yes. Okay, yeah. Councilmember Lynch. I move to award the contract for the 2019-2020 concrete sectioning program to Hard Rock Concrete Incorporated of Westland, Michigan in the amount not to exceed $1,254,810 and award the contract for construction services for the 2019-2020 concrete sectioning program to Hennessy Engineers in an amount not to exceed $83,390. Support. Support from Council Member Squires. And like we promised that we would uh, get all this ready so we can start first thing in the spring so we're not in November and December looking at projects that are not completed. So we're, we're going to start these in April and Hopefully they're done by October. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't run into the cold weather. I'm glad, glad to see we met our timeline that we promised the residents. Any other comments from the table? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. And then item uh, 8, 2019 road bond program contract for Sharon Drive, Gilman Avenue, Reconstruction. Mayor. Council Member Jacobs. I move to award the contract for Sharon Drive Reconstruction, Maplewood to Elizabeth, and Gilman Avenue Reconstruction, Maplewood to Cambridge, to Hard Rock Concrete Inc. of Westland, Michigan, in the amount not to exceed $1,358,295. And award the contract for construction services for the Sharon Drive Reconstruction. Maplewood to Elizabeth and Gilman Avenue reconstruction, Maplewood to Cambridge Avenue to Hennessy Engineers in the amount not to exceed $111,835. Support. Support from Councilmember Earl. And much needed uh, definitely on Maplewood between Merriman and Hubbard in front of our community center is going to be a brand new concrete road. That's not this one, though. But, but that's coming. But, yeah. We, we, a lot of these projects have been long overdue, yep. and uh, I think the residents are going to be happy when they see the results. Mm -hmm. And the and council, council also see we split the costs out, so the uh, road work is going to be for roads only. The underground infrastructure, the water replacement, the mains will be taken from the water fund. Uh, so when we do redo a road, it won't be just road money. There will actually be water department money as well as road money. Mm -hmm. So we can really focus the bond issue for the roads on the asphalt and concrete and not for all the underground infrastructure. That yep. will come from the water department as, a, as already predetermined budget, so we're, we're set. And this is Sharon and Drive and Gilman, which is all concrete as well, so uh, it's fantastic. Um, any other comments from the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes 6-0. Now item nine, uh, the Maplewood work from Hubbard to Merriman. Mayor. Council Member Earl. I move to award the contract for the Maplewood Avenue reconstruction project Hubbard to Merriman to Mark Anthony contracting of Milford, Michigan in an amount not to exceed $1,699,241.86 and a construction services contract for the Maplewood Avenue reconstruction project Hubbard to Merriman to Hennessy Engineers in an amount not to exceed $135,210 for a combined total of 
$34,451.86. Support. Support for Council Member Kerwin. Any comments on this one? And this, this is truly Maplewood Center. Uh, for those that have driven on that road and parked on that street and thought you were on a dirt road, uh, this is a, be a brand new exciting road also from Merriman as you drive down uh, Marquette, uh, Maplewood. It is concrete all the way to um, Merriman, correct? Then we're going into asphalt at that point that's been broken up for mm -hmm. years. As a place where a lot of our residents uh, go to and a major roadway across our city uh, needs to be finished off to, to attach to the other ends that have been completed. So this one, it was on a list, uh, not sure when to get done, but clearly this should be done in the first year. This, this will make Maplewood uh, concrete the entire length of our city on Maplewood from Inkster to Vinoy. It will be comp uh, completely concrete when we finish this piece. Mayor, one, one other thing too is I like that we've, uh, we're using three different contractors mm -hmm. for all these projects. So one contractor we're not relying on com completely. So this way uh, we shouldn't have run into any issues with them. Correct. Yeah. We'll have work going on in different parts of the city at the same time. That's the other reason for picking the different contractors. Uh, any other comments from the table, from the general public? Mr. Jones. Uh, Michael Jones, Donnelly Garden City. Are we gonna be able to do anything about the lighting on Maplewood in front of the community center? Because it's pretty dark at night and I'm getting tired of stepping out with my car into mud puddles and stuff like that. We can take a look at that. We can take a look. But definitely you won't be stepping into those puddles anymore with yeah. the new roadway. Puddles should be gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix that for you. But we're you. saving on lights because we're giving you a new road. Yes. But we'll take a look at the lights. That's good. Thank you. We'll, look, we'll look into it, Mr. Jones. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. Item 10, fuel bid. Mayor. Councilmember Squires. I move to award a three-year fuel bid to Oakland Fuels of Waterford, Michigan in an amount not to exceed $130,000 per year. Support. Support from Councilmember Jacobs. For the residents, this is gasoline for all the city vehicles, police cars, fire vehicles, DPS. Uh, this is a contract for, for the fuel. Uh, comments from anybody else? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Item 11, lawn maintenance contract. Mayor. Councilmember Jacobs. I move to award a three-year lawn maintenance cleanup contract to RFC Incorporated DBA uh, U.S. Lawns of Livonia, Michigan in an amount, annual amount not to exceed $26,000 per year. The contract effective March 1st, 2019 through February 20th, 2021. Support. Okay. And for the residents, this is for uh, the small city parks, the Molar Field Complex, and the Maplewood Center. Uh, and this also includes spring and fall cleanups. Any other comments from the table? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, passes 6-0. Item 12, supplemental appropriation for the DDA. Mayor. Council Member Lynch. I move to approve the following supplemental appropriation for fiscal year 18-19, transferring $50,000 from the DDA use fund balance to the DDA streetscape maintenance con amount. Support. Support from Council Member Jacobs. This is just moving uh, the money from one account to the other to pay for the streetscape. Uh, any other comments from the general public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes 6-0. Item 13, Silversmith Data Asset Status Tracking System Software. Mayor. Council Member Jacobs. I move to approve an agreement with Silversmith Data for Asset Status Tracking System soft Software for a first year cost of $10,100 $10, 
including the GPS device and tablet, and then an annual cost of $2,250 starting the second year. Support. Support from Councilmember Squires. Uh, Mr. Docker, do you want to explain this to the residents? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. This, this is something long, long coming to our community. It's basically our assets, uh, our fire hydrants, our water mains, uh, street lights, everything else throughout our city. We have some maps of where fire hydrants are, but you can't do anything with those maps. What this does is it makes it very interactive that you can actually now on computer, computerized, whether you're in your office or a fire truck driving down the road, can go to the tablet, locate the closest fire hydrant, and immediately clicking on that can have all information about that fire hydrant itself. It's no longer just as a map with a fire hydrant. Uh, if it, there's repairs needed, if there was some changes made to that location, that as well as our water mains. Right now we have a water main blowout somewhere on Belton Street. We just have a paper and pen list somewhere there's a blowout. We don't have a full map interactive that can start to show us where our blowouts are. This asset management program will, will help us there. Uh, as well as vehicles, as far as vehicle maintenance goes, how many oil changes and tire rotations and things. Right now, again, we're kind of dealing with paper and pen to try to look at history, you'd go through the old files. This computer program, you can click on year after year, which vehicle, when was it taken care of, what was needed for it, and so on. So basically, uh, manhole covers, uh, anything. Uh, part of that higher price the first year is $10,000. After this, it'll be $2,200 a year. So $2,000 a year, we'll have a full running software program of everything up to date to that moment, accessible, like I said, in offices as well as in all of our police vehicles and, and such. But part of the first year <coughs> is we're receiving two GIS systems. Uh, it's a large stem sticking up with a tablet on it where you literally can go to any one of our, uh, say a blowout, a water main blowout down the street from your house. You can stand there, hold this stick, press water main blowout. It re immediately goes to the cloud into our computer system. Step back, take a picture, take a picture, send that and just walk down the street and be done. Our computer system immediately will locate where the water main blowout was as well as those photographs of that blowout. And you can imagine over six months, over years of the information that we would have from each of these projects rather than having a file full of paper and pen notes of what happened when. So this, uh, the first year it's a little more because we're buying two of these systems. And then after that it just continues to maintain for us uh, as any software program does, uh, maintain our information at $2,200 a year. So this is, this is us getting into the future of, of where we need to be. Nice. Okay. Any other comments from the table? Yeah, Mayor. Um, I believe talking with Mr. Oman, uh, one of the problems they have is one year they may have a, a break a little further down the block and then they come into <coughs> another one and they end up having three or four breaks into one line. This would tell us that we need to replace the whole line as yep. opposed to Passion. just a certain breaks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that should save us. Okay. Any other comments from the table? From the general public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, six zero passes. Five. Item. Five zero. Oh yeah, five zero. She stepped out. You're right. Five zero. Um Item uh, 14, an overtime payroll program. Council Member Lynch. I move to approve an agreement with Andrews Technology for the hosting of the Novatime payroll program compatible with their BSNA software for a first year cost of $15,006 and then an annual cost of $6,345 starting the second year. Support. Support, Council Member Squires, Mr. Dougherty. Yes, thanks, Mayor. This is another piece of technology that uh, would have been nice if we got into years ago, but you know, sooner than later is, is uh, or late is just as good. We're looking at, uh, we have a major computer system that our program works on, BSNA, that has a little bit of a, a piece that goes into payroll, but it's, uh, it's a very simple, uh, non-developed system. What we're looking at tonight is this Novatime system that actually is the number one favorite program of BSNA. So it collaborates well with our current system. What we have in most of our facilities, including even for the, uh, say, the secretarial pool, administrative pool, are still time cards. We have a cross between either time cards, people clocking in, or actually a department head that has handwritten notes to try to keep up with who the part-time employees are or what's happening. So there's a lot of manual work that's done even at the department head level and then into payroll where everything from there has to be calculated or recalculated again. This system, uh, similar to this I used 10 years ago in, in Georgia and South Carolina, everything is done spur the, like right at the moment 
you're at your desk, you can check in, you start for the day, the end of the day you're checking out. Uh, there is no longer a question as we've had in the past year, someone had seven and a half hours sick time, they put in eight hours and then someone else had to find it and said you don't have eight hours and it became a discussion. This system, if you put in seven and a half hours, or eight hours and you only have seven and a half, you can't even go any further. It stops you right at that moment. There's no discussion by others how many hours you have left. The computer tells us right there. The snow day we had the other day uh, that we were off, there was a discussion on how everybody should mark their time cards to make sure that the eight hours are paid or this computer system, one person could go in overall and press snow day, eight hours, and we're done. And you just move on. So the time efficiency here is, is tremendous as well as uh, just keeping up uh, everybody's records uh, from that point on. So uh, overriding the, the way this gets so accepted is the, the foreman or the leadership above an employee, they have to approve that person's payroll by just at least being able to glance at it, look at it, not calculate anything else, it's all done financially. It gets to the top that uh, it's accountability more than we've had in the past because the person's putting in clearly what they, what they did the moment that they did it. Also in DPS and places where people don't have access to computers quickly, we'd still have a time card system, but it won't be a time card, it's a finger system. Put your finger in, pull the finger out, immediately right to our BSNA system, what time you clocked in that day. You know, 7.50 in the morning, whatever time it was, no longer is there a card or someone else puts somebody else's card in or then someone in the office has to recalculate the numbers of what time you started it's all done with a finger system. So if we do have any card system anywhere, it will be electronic by the finger rather than multiplication. So it's, it's just, it's getting us back again to where we're moving into the future, much more efficient uh, across all departments because a lot of department heads spend a lot of time working on these time cards. So now it's, it's gonna be automatic. It's wonderful. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the table? Um, yes. Yeah. Council Member Squires. Uh, Angela Hospice has been using a, uh, something similar to that for about the last five years. And it really helped our HR department. It helped, you know, keep everybody on us. Yep, right. Very so. good. Anybody else from the general public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5 0. <clears throat> Item uh, 15 purchase of desktop computers. Mayor. Councilmember Earl. I move to approve the budgeted purchase of 30 new replacement Hewlett Packard desktop computers in reference to Michigan State bid REMC-HP-NASPO-15 in the amount of $23,905.20. Support. Support from Councilmember Jacobs. Mr. Dougherty. Yes, thank you, Mayor. This is uh, another item as we decided last spring going into the budget that we're gonna go to the cloud. Uh, we had a choice either spend a lot of money up front and have a system that was a 2016 system or we can spend a little less uh, up front and then spend it over time where we can move to the immediate 2019 Microsoft Office system which is what we have now 365 so we are technically in the cloud our system uh, all of our electronic system goes into the cloud uh, where the information can still be stored forever and it's a cost savings without a doubt over time but part of the issue as we looked around the offices before we got into last year's budget was the computer systems themselves. We've got a lot of boat anchors uh, that would probably be great as boat anchors, but they're not great as computers themselves. So as we move to today's technology, we, we as of last week, we're still using 2007 technology. Uh, so there was a lot that wasn't compatible with today's software for anything from things that are 12, 13 years ago. So this, is, uh, this was something that we already pre-budgeted. We planned on at least 30 this year. We may do another 30 in the next budget to just get our systems uh, up to date at this point because our systems were even much older than our computer software we we're using. So this was the purchase, 30 computers. Uh, we already anticipated this last year. Uh, this was just going through the process now that we have moved to the cloud. Okay, any other comments from the general public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. At this time, we'll move on to item 12, public comment for, uh, from the general public for items that were not on the agenda tonight. If you wish to speak, there is a three minute time limit. It's your opportunity to come up and give a comment or a statement. It is not the time to go back and forth with council members. Anybody wishing to speak? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the city manager's report. I uh, just want to say tonight we did a lot of great things. It may not seem like it, but this is uh, moving us into the future, but I'll tell you, I'm excited about that McDonald's. 
That's the, that's really, that's the number one thing. <laughs> that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Lynch. I just like to take the time, I know a lot of people have said it to individual people, but I wanna really thank the, our Department of Public Services, our police department and our fire department, all these snow emergencies that we've had over the past couple of weeks with the ice and snow and everything else that goes along with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Our staff, our workers, <clears throat> they're, they're just outstanding. They were there, they made it work, and I never had a problem getting out of my driveway. Even on the iciest days, I heard the truck coming down the street and taking off the ice to the best of their ability, then moving to the left and the right. And the only other thing I can say is please, cars, get off the street when there's a snow emergency. It makes their job even easier being able to get it from edge to edge. But thank you to the staff uh, for all that you've done. And that's all I have, thank, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Jacobs? A uh, couple of things. Uh, Parks and Rec is having a Valentine's VIP skate. It is Saturday, February 16th from 12 to one o'clock at the Garden City Ice Rink. It's $5 per person admission. That includes uh, drinks and treats. Uh, also, uh, your skate rentals if you need skates. Uh, but it's uh, Valentine's Day, daddy, daughter, uh, anybody you wanna bring, uh, it should be, should be a very nice event. Um, also to piggyback on Council Member Lynch, um, police, fire, uh, DPS. I know the first snowstorm, because we've been so, we got canceled on one, but the first snowstorm, uh, I happened to be driving and there was a house fire that they were battling in the snow and uh, it was impressive. I happened to stop by and watch from a distance and uh, it's impressive to watch a blaze that big and, and uh, the work they were doing in those conditions. Um, and then to go on with that, the DPW that uh, working on water main breaks, middle of the night when it, we were having sub-zero. Uh, I know I don't like to go to my car, let alone be in a hole, you know, eight or 10 feet down in the ground. Uh, it, it's cold and they're, they're doing a great job. Uh, police department, they, again, they're, they're doing awesome also. Um, now, a couple things with the police. Uh, there were some incidents early, I don't know, maybe a month ago with B, a BB gun and some cars and that. Uh, and I know the people didn't report them to the police department. Uh, when I talked to the chief, he, he didn't know about it. Uh, even if you're not reporting it to the insurance company, your insurance company, report it to the police. Uh, let them know that there's something going on. Uh, maybe they can track uh, a system or a, a pattern there that they can maybe catch whoever's doing it. You know, it's probably kids, but uh, again, let, let them know. Just because you're not making a claim, let, let the police know of it anyways. Also with um, uh, budget coming up, uh, Chief I, I, and Mr. Doherty, I, I, I wouldn't mind if you guys looked into uh, dash cams for the cars, uh, for your vehicles. I know we don't have them now, we have the body cams, um, but just hearing about some lawsuits in other cities, other places, uh, it, it'll help the city, it'll help residents, it'll help our police department. So I'd like to uh, have you guys look into that and maybe <coughs> bring that up at budget time. And other than that, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Squire. Oh, uh, yeah, just one thing. Um, just want to send a shout out to Joe D's Bar, um, Skip and Kathy Cowan, the owners. On January 27th, they hosted the 15th annual broomstick pool tournament for our home pantry. And uh, it was a great turnout. Uh, the patrons, uh, the people that came out, thank you to everyone. Uh, we were able to present a check for $1,900 to the food pantry. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilmember Earl. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to go along and, and thank all of our city workers. And I, I wanted to point one other thing out about um, the police department. We had some home invasions uh, and, and the police, the detectives and, and the line officers did a phenomenal job of uh, working those crimes and, and, and there was a suspect in custody. Um, you know, that, that shows that 
And, and as Councilmember Jacobs said, it's important that we report these incidents when they happen to the police. If they don't know it, they can't investigate it. There could be a pattern going on and they don't know it because we're not notifying them. Uh, so congratulations to them and thank you for a great job. And the last thing I have is uh, to uh, Dan um, and the Parks and Rec Committee, thank you for hard work in McKenna. Uh, that, was, that was a phenomenal uh, thing to help our, our youth, not just the youth programs, but the senior programs. It benefits every aspect of the city and the citizens uh, and Garden City Soccer and GC Hockey and the Figure Skating Club and GCYA uh, really played a big uh, help in, in assisting in which way we should go. So uh, thanks to all those organizations and that's it. Thank you, Mr. Earl. Mr. Miller. Uh, Introduce yourself to the Garden City residents. Tell them a little bit about yourself. And uh, like I said, welcome to Garden City. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I'm three weeks in here, so I'm kind of getting used to um, everyone here in City Hall. I do want to meet as many residents as possible. Uh, I worked in the city of Wayne for about 19 years before and uh, enjoyed serving as the clerk and the planner, so responsible for all the clerk duties and planning uh, here in Garden City, adding some treasurer uh, experience so that will, of course, round out all of my experience, I think, at City Hall to uh, do any job possible. So, uh, but uh, I do want to um, thank the council for the appointment, uh, Mr. Doherty also, and of course, I'm again looking forward to meeting the residents, uh, looking forward to the elections coming forward. And uh, of course, I have to put a plug out for anybody that is interested to work as an election worker, please stop by our counter, fill out an application so that we can staff the election coming up. Um, I uh, live in Westland, Michigan. I don't live very far. And uh, it was a, a easy transition to come from Wayne to here and uh, be a integral part of the community. So thank you again. Thank you. I'm gonna give a shout out to Council Member Kerwin. Uh, she stepped out, she was feeling ill. Hope she's feeling better soon. And also Council Member McCard, she was absent tonight. She's feeling under the weather as well. So we hope uh, both of you get well and come back to the table. Um, Garden City residents, stay informed. You're, I, I hear all the time on the street, oh, I, did, I wish I would have known about that. We have several ways to keep you informed. And I'm gonna say this almost every meeting to really drive it home. You can follow Garden City on Facebook under Garden City Michigan. You can go to our website, GardenCityMichiganMI.org. Uh, everybody in the city gets a water bill. We're now adding inserts in the water bill to keep you abreast on road repairs, events. Um, you can come to the council meetings um, and uh, we're gonna keep you informed. There's no way you should be able to say, I, I didn't know about something. We, we got all these, and you got Nixel. Um, so uh, pay attention to your water bill, go to on, follow us on Facebook, and you'll find out what's going on in your city. Uh, also, I will be giving the state of the city address. Uh, we'll be taping it uh, in the next week, and you'll be able to see that probably, I'm guessing, in three or four weeks. And I'm gonna give you a recap of what happened in Garden City in 2018 and, and where we're going in 2019. So you wanna look for the State of the City address coming within the next three or four weeks on the Garden City channel. And I also wanna say ditto to the, all of our city workers. We have excellent employees and uh, they all do hard work and they're all putting up with the elements, uh, especially these extreme cold days and uh, they're all dealing with them. So. Um, I just wanna give a shout out to, our, to our, all of our employees. And that's all I have, no further business. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>